Hey everybody, Troy W. Hudson again, and I've got a busy, busy calendar today. Um, feeling a little hoarse. I don't know if it's in my head, in my ears, or I'm actually sounding that way when I'm speaking, but it's definitely sounding a, a little bit raspy. Uh, could be because this is probably the coldest morning we've had in a long time in South Carolina. What I've got on the calendar today, I woke up to a beautiful site booking 14 storybooks, children's storybooks, and that is a wonderful blessing to wake up to. Uh, if the voice cooperates and I'm able to get all 14 done, that'll be a new personal best. One of the main stories, uh, it's an ongoing saga. It's the story of Fly Guy, and I have a particular voice I have to reference back to because the, 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 the Chinese client likes a particular style I'm doing, so I have to go back and listen and then get back into character, so I'm going to group all those together. Uh, before I get to those, I'll do some less strenuous uh, vocal um, projects I've got today. And uh, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll stop and start this thing and uh, let you know how it, how it works out. Uh, to get things started, I've, I've got a project, uh, a little short snippet I need to do for Chevron for some e-learning training. And um, <clears throat> basically what I did is I screwed up. I did. I do that a lot, but I clean it up in the editing process. This is something I can't clean up in the editing process. I actually read the script in a more conversational tone, and it was supposed to be do not, and I read it as don't, a common thing that we, uh, that we do when we're trying to be conversational, but the client wanted it specifically said as do not, and uh, so I'll do that pickup line. And again, this is one of those revision things that you do. You put that at the head of your day, and you make sure those clients are taken care of so they're not waiting on me to get them their 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 project so they can plug it into their their training script and get it done into the client and uh, of course this is not a billable change if it were a actual script change or something i had not messed up on obviously i would charge for that but this is not so shut up and just do the work troy okay so we're going to do a test one two three four because we always want to make sure we're recording Troy. okay so we're going to do a test one two three four it sounds like me. Let me listen to it again. Because we always want to make sure we're recording. Yeah, it's funny. I, I sound raspy or maybe it's my ears have rasp. My ears are raspy. I need to turn off the rasp filter. Hold on. Let me adjust this. Oh, well, that's much better. <laughs> you didn't know I had a rasp filter right there. I could go, oh, that's raspy and that's, oh, that's not too bad. Okay. So anyway, that, that works for me. And uh, seriously, I, was, I would, thought I was sounding raspy and it turns out I'm not. So here is the line. Here we go. You do not have to create a new presentation from scratch each time. Later presentations adapt the previous presentation or add or cut detail to address the needs of a particular audience. Using the four quadrant format means the stakeholder who is receiving it becomes familiar with the format and content. So you do not have to reorient them each time as to how the information is being presented. Okay, so I did that, and uh, go ahead and knock it out. Okay, so what I've got here is an ongoing series of children's stories that I'm, I'm doing the voice for uh, a fly guy is, is the name of the st series of stories. And it's a story about a boy and his pet fly. The boy's name is Buzz, and he has a certain sound, and then, of course, the fly doesn't actually say anything except he knows the boy's name, and he says it, and it blows the boy's mind the kid's name is Buzz, okay? And and and, and this is, uh, <clears throat> since I've got so many stories to do with uh, Fly Guy, uh, I need to hear reference this character voice uh, that I've somehow created. Fly was mad. He wanted to be free. He stomped his foot and said, Buzz. That's the, the boy was surprised. He said, you know my name. You are the smartest pet in the world. So it's kind of a high-pitched thing like this. You know my name. You're the smartest fly in the world. So that's kind of what I got to do. Uh, <clears throat> and of course, too, the narrator voice as well. The very expressive, uh, engaging storyteller voice. So uh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. It's my warm-up. Here we go. You, 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 you. Uh, it, don't ask me where I get this stuff. Years of watching Saturday cartoons and silly shows, and, and I guess they're all filed away. Anyway, so the first story, and I'll stick on this track because I've got other stories, but they don't require that particular voice. I need to stay in the zone. 
So um, here we go. Where is that story about Fly Guy? Fly Guy! Oh, Fly Guy! Fly Guy! That's not him. You don't know! That's the Fly Guy story. So where is it before I lose it? <laughs> I should have had these opened already. Chapter 1. One day, Buzz Boy woke up. He was the same size as Fly Guy. Hey, and we're back. And I've been having a good time with the Fly Guy stories. And I uh, decided to change my hat uh, because I'm changing gears now. And working, on, um, uh, working with a client, a martial arts client, that I have not had an opportunity to work with for... I went back on the calendar and looked, and it was over four years ago. And um, I'm excited about that, that they uh, emailed me out of the blue and said, hey, we've got some more presentations to do, and this is for uh, some camps we have going on and for some marketing materials. And so based on that, uh, we're gearing back up. So uh, essentially what they want me to do is they want me to export a finished video for them, and they send me a keynote presentation, which is Apple's version of PowerPoint for lack of a better explanation. Um, and so they've sent me slides and then they've sent me a separate script in uh, the Pages application, a Pages file, which is Apple's version of Microsoft Word. So they've sent me a script and they sent me a presentation and um, I'm just going to go through a, a few of the slides. And um, I'm ex like I said, I'm excited. Uh, I have not worked with uh, John from TKI for quite a while. And um, John, if you see this, man, I'm glad to be working for you guys again. So here we go. Marketing inside and outside your school script. Welcome to our second session of the marketing module on marketing inside and outside of your school. Next slide. Agenda. Today we'll be sharing with you about the types of marketing that we do for our camp products. Being an existing martial arts school, there are internal ways you can market yourself and introduce camp offerings to your members. If you've, been, if you've been running camps already, I'm going to show you how to take it to the next level. No matter how big or small your current base of students is, you'll need to market outside your school as well. This really adds value to your school because it will attract new people that otherwise might never have set their foot inside the door. Okay, so we're back. And what we're doing now is taking this hat off. Woo, shiny. And we're switching back to the ball cap, but we're going to turn it around like this here. And the reason is because left is right. You realize how wacky the universe would be if I had the left ear uh, of the headphones on the right. I would be um, speaking Klingon or something really weird like that. Okay, so what we've got now is I'm going to go ahead and start my recording. And I'm reading an audiobook called Cornbread Chronicles by Jerry Barksdale. It's, it's in the 80,000-ish uh, word audiobook. And it's full of these very, very funny stories um, that I've been reading. And he wanted them done in a down-home folksy kind of read like this here. So I've been having a lot of fun with the, with the stories uh, because they're hilarious and they remind me a lot of the, some of the stories I heard my grandfather and my dad tell uh, growing up in, in Tennessee. And so um, here we go. I'm going to uh, start recording and I'm going to pull up a reference clip because once again, I got to get in here in the mood here. Where's my folder? It is uh, not that one. Uh, Cornbread Chronicles. And so, what do we got? It had free range chickens and didn't waste a drop of electricity. If I got cold, mama told me to stand by the window in the sunlight. Our chickens. All right, so there we go. Got a reference. And uh, here we go. Where are you, PDF file? There you are. Here we go. A warm spot is a thing of beauty. Winter. 1955. It was the coldest night I can remember while we lived at Madison Crossroads. I was spending the night with my cousin David. He was 12 and I was 14. Daddy and Uncle Robert had made a cotton crop that year. Since Uncle Robert and Aunt Lenny had five children, they lived in the big house. We lived down the road in a tenant house. David's older brother, Wayne, who slept with him, was absent. He'd gone to Chicago to look for work. Not only that, but Aunt Lenny had made a vanilla pudding covered with hot chocolate, again, 
Not only that, Aunt Lenny had made a vanilla pudding covered with hot chocolate syrup, and I wasn't about to miss out on that. Mmm, it was good. We sat in front of the kitchen fireplace, eating pudding and drinking fresh milk until the fire burned down to hot coals. Uncle Robert carefully rolled, licked, and twisted the end on a country gentleman's cigarette, and when he had smoked it to a nub, he covered the coals with ashes and declared, Now you young'uns get in bed, you hear? And thus we are just about ready to wrap up another fun broadcast day here at the Troy W. Hudson Studios in uh, beautiful Irmo, South Carolina. And um, it is actually a gorgeous day. I was out there for a while walking around amongst the beautiful 24 pine trees in the backyard. And it's probably about 65 degrees out there. And, and on days like this, when the sun's out and it feels that good outside, you literally have to drag yourself back in. And, and when you're working by yourself, it can be really awkward looking if someone were to see you dragging yourself back in. But needless to say, I was able to bring myself back in because I have work to do. The client actually sent me a pronunciation guide for some of the words in here, which get, can always be a help. And let's see if I can get to that folder. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This day, game characters. Let's see. Hello. These are some of the pronunciations of some of the words. Unicyclus. 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 Screwball. That one's easy. Hamadora. 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 Bibelonia. 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 Bible Galactic. Bible Galactic. Bible Galactic. That's fun to say. Unicyclus. Unicyclus. That's when screwball is picking with unicyclus. Ah. Uh, believe that is. That is. Do they have heavy equipment driving by too? Part, um, <laughs> That's on the recording, the by the way. Unicyclus mispronounces a word. You could just pronounce the word any way how you want to. It's The real word is encouragement, but you can change that out with another word if you want. I did endouragement on the script, but you can use another word if you like. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please speak clearly with all voices because we may auto-tune the voices slightly for a robot voice. I think I can do that. Okay, Unicyclus speaks in a superhero voice, big and strong, most accomplished, most decorated hero on the planet. Left wing is the twin of right wing, a part of the superhero squad, very silly looking and never talks, only laughs. <laughs> right wing is the twin of left wing, aggressive with a raspy voice. He's part of the superhero squad. And then there's Screwball, aggressive with a loud Brooklyn accent with a light, slight rasp to the voice, a part of the superhero squad. I've never actually been to Brooklyn. I've, I have watched uh, movies, so we'll see how this goes. Mm. And the description is, on the rusty side of town, I'm not reading this part, I'm just doing this to get into character. On the rusty side of town, a frantic little screwdriver and hammer Dora are, are flying up to a rusty, good thing, are flying up to a rusty falling house up the stairs and busts into a room, up the stair and they bust into a room. An out of breath screwball starts to speak but is interrupted by Unicyclus knocking the door off its hinges when he enters. And this is Screwball. Watch it, bud, before I pop your only tire. See how you get around then. Huh. So uh, I'll get into the uh, video character thing and uh, I'll see you guys later or you'll see me later or however that works. So. Thanks for hanging around with me. Bye.